Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Hatfield Congregational on uh, this, our very first day of Holy Week 2019. Let's start with our announcements and then we'll move on to the beauty that is today's liturgy. First of all, uh, this beautiful plant right here in our sanctuary is offered by Maureen and that is offered in honor of the peacemakers in an often chaotic world. And so we, offer, we thank her for that. Also, the chat and coffee. Um, we had a beautiful breakfast, I heard, this morning. Uh, so we thank the men of the, uh, the parish for uh, helping with that, which was right before service. Oh, there, there, there you go. And I think that is going to the Council on Aging. Did you guys decide the proceeds from that? Or not sure yet? Elderly. Okay. So that uh, we thank everybody who uh, supported that this morning. And, oh, did I miss something? And then after, uh, after service this morning, we have chat and coffee, and that is offered by Mary and Ed over there, and we appreciate that. If anyone would like to purchase gift cards or stop and shop in Big Y, Linda, as you know, is right there. Easter flower donations are still being accepted, I assume, and uh, today Amy is working so that she could be here next Sunday on Easter. Uh, but if you would like to make an Easter flower donation, is anyone, is it Marty? So you can see Marty for the Easter flower donations. Also, Bible study group will meet tomorrow at 7 p.m. If you want to kind of get a little bit of extra zing in your Holy Week, uh, we are talking about the Passion at this time from Mark's Gospel. That is from 7 to 8 tomorrow. Maundy Thursday. It's an absolutely beautiful service, a very solemn service. It will take place on this Thursday at 7 p.m. This sanctuary, this place of God, this place of quiet and contemplation will be open from 9 a.m. till 3.30 p.m. on Good Friday. Uh, Mark's Gospel says that Jesus is actually nailed to the cross at 9 in the morning. At 12 o'clock noon, the skies grow dark, and at 3 p.m., Jesus dies. Uh, Good Friday is the single most solemn day of the entire year for Christians. Even if you cannot come here um, during those hours, Friday night this week is not a time to go out to the movies, a time to go out to dinner, a time for partying. It is Good Friday. Jesus, our Savior, dies. Uh, so even if you can't sell, uh, remember that here, uh, try to remember that in your daily lives somehow. Um, Saturday, as Jesus lies in the tomb, but he said, I will die and resurrect. You have to wait. You have to hope. And so in that spirit of hope, we will have an Easter egg hunt. Volunteers are coming at 9 a.m. to help hide the eggs. And then at 10 a.m., the kids from our church and the community are invited to come for the Easter egg hunt. Easter, <coughs> excuse me. I get all choked up about this. Easter sunrise service is at 5.45 in the morning. 
So 5.45, we are going to meet at Matt and Melody's over across from the American Legion. And um, I saw the long range forecast this morning. It's supposed to be a little bit drizzly, uh, but we will be out there rain or shine at 5.45 a.m. Um, if you can't make 5.45 a.m., we do have a beautiful church service here at 10 o'clock a.m. Also, uh, thank you to the ones who did uh, work and support that breakfast, as I mentioned. Um, also, we do have those church forms over to the side. I have a bunch of them, but if you haven't had a chance yet, we really do hope you'll take one of those slips of paper, fill out uh, why you like church, what church means to you, what you get here that you can't get anywhere else, and then we hope to print a little bulletin insert for next week for Easter Sunday. So the little forms are over there. If you could fill one of those out just quickly, it doesn't have to be a long thing, just a sentence, uh, that would be wonderful, and thank you very much for that. Also, the children and youth, I'm going to invite you forward after we bless the palms. Um, it says in the Bible that the children just, you know, they were so joyous as Jesus arrived that they, they came and they waved the palms, they laid them down. So we're going to ask the children to come and distribute the palms uh, to you, the faithful, in the congregation. So young people, please be aware of that. The Passion will be read after Sue reads uh, from Philippians, and the readers who have already been assigned, we're just going to line up right here. So after Sue does her reading, our readers will come right up here. Also, there is a senior wellness uh, survey, and this is coming from the group Heads Up, and uh, they had a very poor turnout through their uh, newsletter to the seniors, and so they've given it to both churches in town. If you could fill this out, it is in our hall. Uh, just drop it right in the box, and we'll get it back to uh, uh, Gene Hobby over at the elementary school. So if you could fill one of these out, it would be much appreciated. Um, Anthony, you need one of these senior hobbies? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So, if you could do that, it would be much appreciated. Any other announcements? Yes? We are still selling candy. That's the challenge that I hope you find cancer and you get a nice Texas. It's worth about $7 or $8. It's a gift certificate for a free appetizer on each bag. So, it's kind of worth the three bucks. Perfect. Thanks, Linda. And, yes, Anthony. Yeah. So you notice in the back of your bulletins, the choir and I are planning a music Sunday um, in three weeks, so two weeks after Easter, all music um, in lieu of a sermon. We'll be doing a 15-minute Baroque cantata, where we're going to have a string quartet joining us that day. So, it, it, that sounds beautiful, except for in lieu of a sermon, of course, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, any other announcements? All right, seeing none, the prelude today to get us into this Holy Week liturgy is all hail the power of Jesus' name.
you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. If I could ask our young people to maybe come forward so that as soon as we bless the uh, palms, they can help with the distribution. <clears throat> There are a couple of responses in your bulletin if you'd like to follow along. All right. There we go. All right. God be with you. Let us give thanks to God the Most High. Let us pray. O God, who in Jesus Christ triumphantly entered Jerusalem, heralding a week of pain and of sorrow, be with us now as we follow the way of the cross. In these events of defeat and victory, you have sealed the closeness of death and resurrection, of humiliation and exaltation. We thank you for these branches of palm that promise to become for us symbols of martyrdom and majesty. Bless them and us that their use this day may announce in our time that Christ has come and that Christ will come again. Amen. Come Christ Jesus. If you'd like to grab some of the palms there, guys, make sure everybody has one or two. Be generous. Red hymnal number 
175, right on, right on in majesty. Jesus standing tall on his way to Jerusalem. All right. 
So then you're going to take it about five or six inches up and you're going to fold it over. Okay. Now, that bend in your palm, you're going to hear when Sue reads that Jesus empties himself of his divinity uh, to become like us. This is Jesus bending down to become one of us. His suffering is real. All right, then you're going to take it about um, a quarter of the way down. You're going to fold it so there's a 90 degree angle. Like the long one? Like yeah. that? Okay, guys, that's like this, I think, right? Yeah. All right. I don't. I, I wish I could help you more, but. Any. Is this right? Yes. Thank you, ladies. I, I, so the um, we're starting to make the arms of the cross. The arms of the cross are to symbolize how much God loves us, that he loves us, to, um, his arms are fully extended, that God loves us all. Okay. Okay. I'm going to get it to about as far as long as you want this to be, and kind of fold it over again. Like this. How did you do that? How did you just fold it like that. She says, just do it. <laughs> <laughs>
you do need help, we'll have a remedial class afterwards. <laughs> Thanks, guys.
Also, uh, we are offering our prayers for uh, people who are on strike at Stop and Shop, and we pray that that is resolved as soon as possible. We continue to pray for Charlie Kellogg um, as he continues his recovery. We pray for Sue Gilman, who is uh, battling her cancer. We pray for Glenn and Denise Wagner and their times of special need. Prayers for Muriel Kilbovich. Prayers for Lynn O'Master, she treated for her cancer. Prayers for Jean Sheehan, and I see Marsha is back with us after her time in, in Florida. And we heard he's doing well. We're praying that it's still good news. Excellent, Marsha. Good to hear. Glad to hear. Glad to see you back, too. Uh, prayers for Bernie Lampern. Um, he is hoping, and June is hoping, to be here with us on Easter. Uh, so we do hope that that's possible. Prayers for Bernie as he continues his recovery. And prayers for Sarah and Jimmy Pigeon and their twin daughters, Vivian and Genevieve. Grandma is back with us now after visiting and coming in and all that stuff on the screen. So very nice to uh, hear good news about those two young girls. Uh, any other news that you would like to share? Celebrations, concerns, anything like that? Nothing? Oh, yes. I would just like to celebrate that my grandson Noah recovered from his surgery and is eating and digesting like a champ. Beautiful. Good to hear. That's wonderful. Excellent. And anything? Yes. I think you know that's for the 29-year-old man. Yes. Okay. Uh, seeing nothing we want to say publicly, uh, let us just come together in silence uh, to say the things to Jesus that need to be said in silence and to listen for his whispers. Savior who brings peace and glory, who has come to teach and inspire the multitudes and to call all of us to discipleship, help us to celebrate the triumph of humility and the satisfaction of servanthood. We rejoice that you shared our humanity and lifted the self-esteem of all who can now recognize our divine likeness because of our connection with you, our humble, suffering Savior. May all the world receive your Holy Spirit and give thanks for your sacrifice of love. Since you love us enough to endure the trial and torture of your coming passion, we know that you also love us enough to hear our prayers offered at this very moment. Let our conversations always keep us in close communion. Let us please now join together in reciting the prayer that Jesus himself gave us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our day our daily bread, forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but to their us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If Jesus Christ is to reign among us, much more will be needed than our praise and our rejoicing when we are together. How do we witness and serve when we are apart? How much of ourselves and of our possessions will we invest so that Christ's presence and power we may manifest throughout all the world? Considering all of Jesus' sacrifices that we will remember during this Holy Week, what will we offer so his work may continue through our efforts of this church? Please be as generous as you are able. Thank mm -hmm. you.
you and for all others on this first day of Holy Week, and we think about how much Jesus gave for all of us, and then the triumph that all of that led to. May these gifts offered in our faith in you and in this community of this church, may these also rise up and accomplish great things for your kingdom here on earth. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. <coughs> Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Okay, at this point, if we could have our volunteer readers come forward. There is no sermon this Sunday. The uh, passion count is rather long. That's why we're breaking it up with your various readers. Uh, but remember that this truly is uh, the Word of God. And since a lot of people uh, may not be familiar any longer with the, uh, the passion story and all of its details, uh, please pay attention because this is the story of Holy Week. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to St. Luke When the hour for the Passover meal came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. A dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those in authority over them who are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials. And I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me, a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail, and you, once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you've denied three times that you even know me. He said to them, When I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, No, not a thing. He said to them, But now, the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. Indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, It is enough. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, 
Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they said, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple of police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were abandoned? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour, the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else, on seeing him, said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, And I am not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophecy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe. If I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? He said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other, before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence, and have found that this not, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death, and I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! 
This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the, in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why, what evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that this demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. The days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to this mountain, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by watching. But the leader scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God? since you are under the same sentence of condemnation, and we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land, until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood a distance watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath they rested according to the commandment. Thank you, readers. Now join in our second hymn, hymnal number 194, which is Midnight on Olive's Brow. It talks about how Jesus was all alone in his grief before his passion.
now separated by some two millennia, uh, that we can still be with Jesus to help lighten his load. Uh, I'm always impressed by this time of the year, and this is the reason why I became a minister. Um, I just I just can't really process how much God loves us in, in this person of Jesus, and uh, this whole week is extremely meaningful, and I hope that uh, you'll make the time for it to be possible for it to be meaningful in your lives. I know we're all busy, uh, but this is Holy Week, and this is the one week out of the 52, uh, where we can maybe put Jesus as a priority. And so as it says here on the bottom of the bulletin, if you'd like to come join us on Monday, Thursday, which is Jesus' last supper day, uh, a beautiful, powerful message in a darkened church, when we anticipate Jesus' death and remember uh, the, our own dearly departed, we add them to our book as under the, the light there at the back of the church. Um, Friday, you're more than welcome to come join me here. And uh, then on Easter Sunday, I'll be there. <laughs> uh, resurrection service at uh, dawn, 545, and then back here at 10 o'clock uh, for a joyous celebration. So let us now join together in our benediction response. We have testified to God's mighty works in Christ. We now go into the world to carry on what Jesus began. Have the mind of Christ who did not grasp for power. Let us reach for our full humanity and humility and the bond of our shared lives. We are the glory of what Christ has taught. God's word is in our hearts and on our tongues. The one who was rejected is head of the church. We will follow the faith and trust wherever Christ will lead. Be assured of Jesus' continuing help and blessing, his steadfast love. It endures forever. Let us honor the name of Jesus above all other names. Blessed is the one who comes in God's name.